So this is the lovely brother Enova's A150 machine. So this is when you're looking at um, purchasing machine, the best way to go nowadays is to um, go computerized. You've got so many um, so many features within the machine that makes it so much easier for you. Now when you're unpacking the machine, the first thing that you'll notice is like where your thread is going to go up here. Now you won't have this little one here, I'm going to take that down because this is going to show you the extra stitches which you can do on the machine but we're not going to go through that, we're going to start off with basics. So you have your spool holder here which you're going to put your top thread on. Now. In the machine it will have uh, an empty bobbin which you're going to take out of here so you're just going to slide that to the right hand side to remove the cover to the bobbin and we're going to take out this empty bobbin here. Pop it up the top here and we're going to start by filling a bobbin. Most of the reels of thread that you use will be a smaller reel. So with the cap that is included with, with the machine, this is for your larger reels. So I would go to the smaller cap which is included. Then we're going to pop it, pop the thread onto the machine. Now what's important too is the way that the thread is put on there. Now you always make sure that the name of the thread is to the left and that's how that it's in that it's made to come off the spool. Now on the machine itself it does have a diagram on there to show you where to thread it. So the first thing we need to do is fill a bobbin. So we're going to tuck it around this first guide here underneath here. Now on the machine we're going to follow the dotted line. So what I do what I do is I hold the thread with my other hand so I'm going to pull it into the little bobbin spring here, this little pre-tensioner for my bobbin. Now on our little spindle to pop the bobbin onto, um, there's a little grey piece which sits underneath here. Now on each side here is a little thread cutter. And the reason why that they put that on there is so that when we fill the bobbin and we're just going to twirl it around here. Now we're going to, and I didn't get enough thread on there so don't be stingy with that, just put a little bit more thread there, wind it around and then you're just going to cut the thread off just like that. To start with filling the bobbin we're just going to push it over there's no need to um, touch anything on the hand wheel nowadays. Um, with the older machines what you normally had to do was adjust something on the hand wheel so that um, you could disengage the clutch on the machine for it to fill a bobbin. But now we don't have to. What we're going to do is just, just start and the machine automatically will know that we're going to fill a bobbin. So it's up to you on how much that you're putting on the um, bobbin itself. I'm just going to go halfway because I know that I've only just got a little bit of thread there. So I'm just going to push my spindle to the left and then take it off there. And then I'm just going to use my little cutter there to cut that thread. Now what's important too is when you're winding the bobbin is don't wind it too fast because what happens when you're winding it too fast is that the thread actually tightens up on the bobbin itself and then when it's pulling and then once you're winding it and then you're stopping, what happens is that thread relaxes and it's really, it gets really tight and it's really hard to come off here. So it's important just to wind your bobbin slowly. Now once you've got um, your bobbin wound, 
what I'm going to do is pop it into the machine. Now this is really important. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cover off the machine here and I need to just open up my accessory tray to do that and I'm just going to slide this cover back and you can see on the machine it says excuse me that attach the needle plate cover so it's a safety precaution that it's saying well you're not supposed to um, be taking that off if your machine is in use because sometimes that you can accidentally press your foot control or and your needle is going to come down and so we're not wanting that to happen and so that's why they've they've included this little um, button on the machine itself. So when we select this one, it's telling us to lower the presser foot and then select it again. Now this is a safety feature, so none of the buttons here will, will work when this is on. And you can see here that none of these ones will work either. So now I can safely remove my plate here and this is what you're going to do to clean your machine out as well and your bobbin case just slips out. Now the reason why that I took it out because I one I wanted to show you how um, it works with the tension on the bobbin because what you're going to do as far as the direction that you're putting your bobbin into the machine is you're making sure that it's coming off from the left so your your bobbin is going to um, spin anti-clockwise so we're putting that straight in and then what I normally do is I put my finger on the bobbin itself to stop it from moving and you're just going to slide it into that little groove here now what it is is that there is a spring which is holding that thread tight in there and that's how we're getting tension on that bobbin. Now on all of the Brother sewing bobbin cases they have this little green like paint on there because they don't really want you to play with that tension um, because they have preset the bobbin cases just for normal sewing. So I'm just going to take it out um, because I need to pop it back in there. So this is what you're going to do to clean your machine out as well is just clean out some of the fluff in there. Then I'm just going to pop it back in but remember too when you're cleaning it don't don't clean, don't worry about this little pile here, this little um, brushy piece here. This is supposed to be there. Uh, what it does, it, it works with the cutter on the machine and the thread comes over and gets held in there. So we're just wanting to leave that in place. So we pop it in place. Now what we're going to do is make sure that the white arrow lines up with the white dot and we give our bobbin case a little bit of a wiggle so that we know that it's sitting in the right place. Pop our cover back on so it just clips back on and then I'm going to pop my bobbin into place and like I said I hold my finger down on the bobbin so it's not going to turn and it's just going to slip into the groove um, the tension groove on the machine, come around and cut the thread off there. So we do have another cutter here. So they've thought of everything with on the machine. So I'm going to, now that I've got that back on, I can take my safety feature off, lift up my foot and then attach the bobbin cover by slipping it into the left hand side here first and clicking it down. Now that my bobbin is threaded what I'm going to do is thread up my machine. So I've just taken it out of the little um, tensioner um, spring here and it's going to come down to my number three. Now because it, we've got an electronic machine our little piece in here which is called the take up is where what the thread the top thread comes around well 
if you're not sure whether you've got it in the right position, what you can do is just press this button, which is our needle down button, and press it again and make sure that it's to the uppermost position. Then I'm going to put my foot down at this stage so I've got a little bit of pressure on my um, thread and I'm going to slip it around the guide just here. Now this is where the magic happens. We're going to thread up our needle. Now we don't have to just thread it manually nowadays. We do have needle threaders on the machine. And so what we're going to do is just slot it into the guide here, bring it over to the number seven in between here, and then we have another thread cutter on the side of the machine here. Then all we're needing to do is just bring it down and the machine's going to thread it for us. So what happens, there's a little hooky thing which comes down and pokes the thread through the needle. So you can see how it's made a little loop here. And because I've got my foot down, I've got pressure on that top thread, I can just grab that thread there and then lift up my foot and pop it through underneath the foot. Now I've just noticed that I'm coming to the lower end of my reel here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the reel, the, the top thread here. Now what I what is a good thing to do when you, and especially when you're starting with a new machine, is start off with new habits. And I know that in the past that if you've done some sewing that usually what you do is when you're going to change your thread is just grab the thread and pull it back through to the, through the top. But unfortunately that can do damage to your machine or you can drag the fluff from in through the thread path here back through to your tension disc here. Now we don't want that to happen. We want our machines to be working beautifully all the time. So with the normal flow of the thread, and you can see as it's pulling through here, it's a good idea to get into the habit when you're changing your thread, is to cut the thread up the top and pull it through in the same direction as if it was going to be, as though that you were going to be sewing. And then, yes, you are wasting this little bit of thread, but don't worry about that at least you know that you're doing the right thing for your machine. So then take your thread off and then pop your new thread back on. And I'm going to put my spill cap on the end of here. And then I'm going to re-thread my machine. Around my take up. around here. So remember to put your foot down to get it into this part. Bring it around here, cut the thread off and then we're just going to thread the machine. How easy is that? Okay, so we're popping that on. So I'm ready to sew now. Now what I'm going to do is go through some of these other buttons and dials that we have here. Now up the top here we have our tension uh, here. So the tension discs are what presses on the top thread as it's coming through here and it's just so important to get um, a quality stitch and so you're not needing to have too much tension or too less but we'll go into that later. The standard setting is on four and majority of the time that's what you're going to set your machine to. Now as we're coming up here, now if I take my foot control out, I can use the machine by pressing my start stop button here. If I push my bobbin spindle over, I, you can see that the machine is working just by me starting and stopping the machine here. Now 
when do I use that? The only time that I do like to use that, maybe if I'm filling bobbins. And what I normally do is I reduce my speed down here and then I'm pressing my start stop here. So just stop it and then push that over. And of course, if you um, have trouble using the foot control, you can certainly use the start stop button. But as a sewer, I suggest that you use your foot control. You do have a lot more control over your sewing and your speed that you're sewing when you're using your foot control. So I'm just going to leave it up on high there. Okay, so then the next one up here is our reverse button. This is a little tie-off button here, a needle down and our scissors. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how each of these buttons work. So we've seen the start button there by using the uh, bobbin winder here. But I'm just going to remove the foot control again. And you can see how that you have to use your speed control when you're using your start stop button here to get control when you're using it, using just the button and not the foot control. So when you're using that, you can't have your both hands on your fabric, so you don't have as much control as you'd like. Now what I'm going to do is just press my scissors here because I'm at the end of my seam and I'm going to cut my thread. So then I'm, when I lift my foot, I don't have to reach for my clippers to cut my thread. So what it's doing, it's pushing the top thread down to the bottom and then it's going to grab the thread and cut it off there, which is great. Now, I'm just going to put the foot control back in because I prefer to use the foot control. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reverse stitch. So when you're starting your seam, what you're going to do is start on the edge of the fabric now while we're talking about that, what you'll find with, uh, and when you're having a look at um, the foot of the machine as well, it's a little bit longer than the standard um, J foot or normal sewing foot that you get on the machine. And also the feed dogs are longer as well. And that's what you're getting when you're buying um, a quality machine like the, the Brother a150 is that with the longer feed dogs and the longer standard foot that it's able to hold on to that fabric just that little bit longer for you. While we're here also while I've got this foot off you I know that in the past there are a lot of um, people that tend to use a clear foot when they're doing their normal sewing but the problem with that is the clear foot that comes with the machines have got a big groove underneath the foot here. And the thing is when, when the foot is making contact with the fabric and the feed dogs, you're only getting contact on the outside of the foot here. This foot is designed to be used for just for your normal sewing and it's got this big flat area here so that it's going to press that fabric down and you're getting uh, a quality stitch when, you're, when it's feeding through. So I'm just going to pop that down. Now, I didn't explain to you that the feet are actually just clip on and clip off as well. So that there's a little button at the back of the foot there that, and when you're putting it on, you're just going to align it underneath that there and lower your foot, your presser foot lever down to clip the foot on there. You do have a little black button at the back of the foot here and when you're pressing that in, it clips that foot in nice and straight. So when you're coming up to a, a thick seam, what it does, it levels the foot out and so that the foot's not going to struggle to go up and down on the rise of a thick seam. And that's what that's designed for there. 
while we're here too that you'll see that the markings on the plate here that when you're looking at um, when you're doing your dressmaking and you've got say the you've got a one centimeter or a one and a half centimeter seam with the brother machines they are designed that from the left hand needle needle position to this first marking here is your five eighths or your one half centimeter seam which is your standard seams which um, most patterns include now let's start off and do just a standard seam so I'm bringing my fabric over to one and a half and I'm making sure that my needle's going to come down on the fabric there so when I start stitching I'm going to do a few stitches forward and so this is why I was saying it's important to be able to have two uh, hands to um, hold your fabric because you're getting making it a lot easier and you're getting uh, you can manoeuvre your fabric just that little bit better so we're doing the few stitches backwards and then we're coming to the end of our seam and you can hear how beautiful and quiet the machine is as well and when I'm coming to the end I sew right down to the end of the fabric press my reverse for a few stitches and then sew down to the end as well press my, my scissors on the machine and then lift the foot and there's my beautiful seam if I open that up that's all that's what we should see okay so I'm going to grab another piece of fabric now and I'm going to show you this little tie off stitch now the reason why we include a tie off stitch on the machine is when you're sewing a fine fabric and when sometimes when um, it's a, it is a fairly fine fabric and you're doing a reverse stitch like what we've done here what it's going to do it's going to pull up that fabric in where you you're starting and finishing but what I do when I'm sewing a finer fabric is I use my tie off stitch so what it's going to do it's going to sew a few little stitches backwards and forwards um, in the real just about in the one spot for you and then you're going to continue and sew the seam and I'll just do a little seam this time and then press my tie off again so I'm going to press it so it's going to finish its little dance there and then I'm just going to cut the thread and I'll show you what it's done so what it's doing it's doing just a little finish on the fabric yes you do get this thread actually in the beginning coming through to the back and I'll show you how to stop that but you can see that is holding that that seam quite well there in the beginning and the end to so it's not going to come undone and you don't have that thickness of the reverse there now with this thread which which tends to want to like I I had a fair bit of thread there now if I I'll do this one again and I'll see how if we can um, stop that from happening so I've brought this thread to the side here and I'm just holding it and I'm just going to do my tie off stitch come through and let's do it at the end as well cut the thread raise the foot okay that's so much nicer so you can see with this second one yes it has brought a little bit and so that is my bobbin th thread which is just being brought up there which is fine but that's certainly given me a lot nicer finish than what happens here and this will happen to you it happens to all of us but at least you know um, that the, this is the best way of doing it is just making sure that you've got a little bit more of a thread sitting up the top here and you're holding that top thread before you you're starting off and it's going to give you a little bit nicer finish on the back there 
Now with this next one here is this is our needle down position. With the electronic machines you can set them so that the needle stops down into the fabric. Now when you per just get your machine out of the box it will be preset for the needle to be in the down position. Now what I'm doing is going into the main settings of the machine and this is where that I can change the default within the machine. So you can see here with this second one here and I'm see there's a lot of different pages here that you can go through but I'm just going to this one here and so this machine has been set with the needle to go stay up out of the fabric. I prefer to keep it as at the default setting and that's so that the needle stays into the fabric itself. And I'll show you why. So when you're sewing and I'm just going to pretend that I'm, I'm just going to take my speed back up coming down and say you're needing to stop to turn the corner or you're going to take out a pin. You can see now that without touching anything my needle stays down into the fabric. So then I can lift the foot, I can turn, I can take out my pins, whatever I'm wanting to do just by just lifting the foot. And of course when I'm come to the end and I'll come to the end of my seam and I'll do my normal reverse what the machine will do it'll cut the thread and it will lift the needle up out of the fabric automatically so I don't have to touch anything but my scissors here so then I'm going to lift the foot and you can see that it's just pull that threads to the back and just lift just that little tail which you can just snip off. Now look, let's look at the screen and some of our um, panel over here. Now this is a touch panel so you're going to use your finger to um, select the different um, things on here. First when you're starting off what I want you to do is just have a look at the screen. Now you can see here that we've got like a, a set of nine squares that's representative that we're going to be working from this from this area here for our stitches so it's number one lot of stitches there. Over here it's, it tells me that there's two hearts there what that means is that we're going to have a full line of stitching when we're doing our stitches and we've got the needle down position that we've set and so that's showing there. For every stitch that I change on the machine, the machine will tell me what um, foot to use. And you can see here that there aren't any changes. Oh there we go, that one's changed to a G foot. So just at a glance you can see that okay for that particular stitch I need to put my G foot on then it automatically sets the width and the length for me. So what I'm going to do is just go back to my straight stitch here. Now on this side we're selecting, this is where we're going to select our buttonholes from here and this is our decorative stitches and so this is where our stitch card comes into its own. So it's showing us the direct stitches are from here, so that's these ones. This one here gives us the ones on here because in a moment we're going to do a buttonhole. And then this one is like the different ones that we've got here and the number three um, different decorative stitches. And of course this machine does have, uh, it has the alphabet on here so you can do a couple of different fonts, great for doing um, name badges. So we're just going to, or name tags, that we can do on there. This one, it says to cancel or go back. Um, okay, we're happy with that. Um, but these ones here, like, I wouldn't worry too much about these. They do explain them in, uh, in the handbook for you. Um, 
this one brings it back to a default so sometimes when I'm doing my dressmaking I do use this one because this is where I can save my setting in the machine now these are the most important ones that we that I like to play with so with this one it's going to set an automatic reverse on here and also uh, a tie um, the scissors on here as well now we're on a straight stitch and you're thinking okay it's got up here with the width and the length of the stitch yes I can change the length but I understand that on a straight stitch now with the width on the straight stitch well you don't need a width as such but what it does it moves our position of our needle so as we're looking at the needle itself you can see how it's moving right from the left hand position over to the right hand position when do we need that so we're going to be putting in a zipper or we're going to um, be doing some top stitching. So we're able to use our markings on our foot or the clear part of our foot as a guide and then we can move the needle exactly where we're needing it to go. You're not sure where it was um, originally, so just select the number one stitch again. But if you're wanting the needle to go into the middle, of course you're going to use your number three, which gives you your, your center needle position but we're going to start by using our left hand needle position so because we've got our reverse I'm going to select my reverse here so what it's going to do it's going to automatically do my reverse in the beginning and then when I'm getting to the end of my seam I'm going to just press my reverse button here once and it beeps and it does uh, three stitches backwards, three stitches forwards, and then it stops. And then I'm going to press my scissors. So it automatically does this for me. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do my reverse to start off with. Come down to the end, press my reverse here, but what it's going to do for me, it's going to cut the thread this time. So voila, all done. So I don't have to worry about touching any of these buttons here because I've got this selected. So you can do that on any stitch. Now, if I was going to finish off the edge of the fabric, now traditionally we would use a zigzag stitch and it's already set to what the manufacturer thinks that is correct for a zigzag stitch. Cut my thread. But what I find with the zigzag stitch that sometimes with a softer fabric it's going to pull it over. So that's why that I tend to use my three-step zigzag here. And the reason why it's called three-step zigzag, yes, because it does three steps as it goes over to form the stitch. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to take my reverse off because I don't want to do it to do a reverse on that edge. And what I'm going to do is just sew with it on that edge there. Cut the thread. I'm going to do that again. So I'm just going to sew with it on that edge and then the threads come out of the needle. Rethread the machine. Cut the thread. Use my needle threader. Now what I'm going to align is to make sure that the right hand swing of my needle is going off the fabric. And I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is what I'm wanting is it for it to be sitting right on that edge. 
So that's my three-step zigzag. I find that that's just that little bit better for holding the fibres of the fabric, especially when you're working with the linen like this, where it's very um, fray with the fabric, so the fibres are going to pull out easily, but I find that this really holds um, the, the edges of the fabric really well. Another stitch which I like to use when in this uh, standard sewing setting is this one here, which is your three step, your triple straight stitch here. Now what that does, and I'll show you as it's going around this seam, it actually does a stitch forward, backwards, and then forward again. Now the reason why that I use it for say the crutch of pants or sometimes when I'm sewing in a sleeve is because it is a reinforcing, I'm reinforcing the seam. Most patterns tell you to double stitch your crutch seam and also for putting your sleeves in. But when you're doing this stitch, it's not necessary to do that. And the reason why I use this stitch is because it not only has strength, but it has stretch as well. So it has give within the stitch. So how beautiful is that? And how good is that for a crutch seam? Now there's one more thing that I'm wanting to go through with you in, and that's our buttonhole. Now for our buttonhole, yes, we've got all of these different ones to choose from and you're saying, well, okay, which one? What, what do we go to? Well, when you're looking at them, the basic buttonhole is this one here, the number 61. We're going to go to that same symbol here. So what you're going to do is come down to that same symbol here on the machine. And then now what we're going to do is select the number. So we're going to go six, one, and it's going to show me the buttonhole which I've chosen. It's got the number up the top here. And you can see our little heart has changed just to just a single heart because we're only doing one buttonhole. Now with the buttonhole on this machine, it is a one step buttonhole. That means that once you select the stitch, it's going to do the sequence in one step. You don't have to change to a different stitch for it to do all the four sides of the buttonhole. What you're going to do is push this little lever out and you're able to slot the button in the back of the foot now if you're not if you don't have the button as yet you've got your markings on the side here which you can use um, for the length of the buttonhole that you're wanting to do because sometimes when you're doing a buttonhole you're wanting to use it for a drawstring and not for a button as such so you're just wanting a particular width there now the foot does have an A on it and that's what it tells me on the screen is the number A, the letter A. And so I'm going to clip this onto the machine. So you may have to lift the shank up just a little bit more with the lever to get the foot underneath and clip it on. Now, if I tried to do my buttonhole from here, and so I put my fabric down here and I tried to do it now. It's going to tell me lower the buttonhole lever. So this is the beauty of electronic machines, computerized machines, that you can't get anything wrong. So I'm going to lift the foot and we've got a lever which is in behind the needle threader, which pulls down and goes in behind this little white lever here. Now, what I like to do is I like to get this first bit of thread through my buttonhole foot. Now, normally I would have my marking where my button, buttonhole is going to go, but what I do is I put my needle down, back up again, and then I just drag that thread through my foot. It just gives me a little bit neater um, start to my buttonhole. 
so then this is just so hard on this machine all I have to do now is press my foot control before I go any further there's one thing that I do do which I have forgotten to do when I'm doing a buttonhole to get a smoother looking buttonhole I'm going to reduce my top, top tension the reason why I do that is I want the top thread to come over onto the back of my fabric to give me a smoother look to my um, stitching on the buttonhole so it does a reinforcing stitch for a start comes over with my zigzag comes back up on my right hand side does a bar tack at the end goes back over my reinforcing stitch and now it does the magic of doing a tie off stitch here and then I'm going to cut the thread it's going to lift the needle up and there's my buttonhole you can see this little bit of thread which I'm just going to just take out of there so that's my my thread which I started with but how beautiful is that buttonhole and just this little tail of thread here so anyone can do a buttonhole now I love it.